Joining us now, Democratic Congressman Jake Achenkloss of Massachusetts. Congressman, good to see you again. Um, let's start with, with Israel. Your assessment of this uh, current pause, which has been extended and the administration hopes will be extended further. What do you think is, how has it gone in terms of the prisoner hostage exchanges as well as aid going into Gaza? Good morning, thanks for having me on. My week began with a meeting with the families of the hostages who had flown from Tel Aviv to discuss their plight with members of Congress. And one of those family members who had brought with her five pictures of loved ones taken on October 7th was able to tell me that over the course of her flight here, three of them had been released. And we want more of those conversations. All eyes on Bill Burns to see what is possible. He has the full confidence of the president. He also uh, is talking with counterparties who have standing in the Israeli cabinet. And that's critical because uh, they need to be able to, to get a deal past the Israeli cabinet as well. I'm likely to support whatever measure that the Americans uh, and the Israelis can accede to that's going to get more hostages home because that's the top priority. S so long as it still affords the is Israel the military latitude it needs to pursue and destroy Hamas. Because there will be more hostages in the future if Hamas is allowed to remain in governance of Gaza. And that's not my opinion of the situation. That's what Hamas itself has said it intends to do. So, Congressman, let's talk about some growing divides, though, in your party about exactly that. There are some, in your words, outliers among Democrats that have called on the U.S. to support a full ceasefire. We also heard from the president over the weekend mused to the idea of putting some conditions on Israeli aid, although the administration has walked that back somewhat. What's your take on both of those things? Calling for a ceasefire doesn't make it so. There was a ceasefire in place on October 6th, and the next day Hamas walked right through it to murder, to terrorize, and to torture 14,000 innocents in Israel. So when individuals call for a ceasefire, what they're saying is Israel should lay down its arms and Hamas should have the latitude to continue to terrorize not just Israelis, but actually Palestinians as well. Hamas is releasing these hostages only because Israel has retained its military leverage over the last 50 plus days. And now to handcuff Israel before all the hostages have been released, while Hamas's leadership is still extant in southern Gaza, uh, would be to uh, finish before the objectives have been completed. So this is the middle and this is not the end. Uh, of course, everybody ultimately wants a ceasefire. This war is a nightmare, but those calls for a ceasefire should be directed at Hamas, which right now could end this for everybody. If they would release the hostages and if they would engage with the IDF as combatants and not as terrorists, this entire nightmare for Palestinians and Israelis alike could, could end. And of course, there's the open question about what sort of aid Congress can send to Israel, uh, yes. and if that can be done before the Christmas break. We'll see with how the Republican majority does with it. But, uh, Congress, we want to talk to you um, about one specific Republican, and that's that House Democrats have moved to force a vote this week on whether to expel Congressman George Santos from office. Yesterday on the House floor, one of the Congressman's colleagues, Congressman Robert Garcia, filed a privilege resolution to expel the indicted Republican. Following a scathing report from the House Ethics Committee, that found substantial evidence Santos broke the law. Garcia's move means House leaders must now schedule a vote on the resolution within two legislative days. Now, the defiant Long Island lawmaker has already survived two other expulsion efforts and says he would not turn to his colleagues for support. He's denied any wrongdoing and has pleaded not guilty to multiple federal charges. So, Congressman Achenkloss, you were one of the 31 House Democrats who earlier this month voted to actually keep Santos in Congress. Explain what your rationale was then and how you plan to vote this time around. I'll be voting to expel George Santos. He's had due process now. Even liars and fabulists in this country deserve a fact-finding, impartial forum uh, composed of their peers to adjudicate their claims. He's had that now with the House Ethics Committee. The Republican chairman of that committee has filed the resolution to expel him. And uh, that's the due process that he is owed, and he now needs to leave Congress. All right. Well, Democratic Congressman Jake Achenkloss of Massachusetts, we appreciate you again joining us this morning, and we hope to speak to you again soon. Still ahead here on.